I think as educators, we are constantly trying to evolve and put in new systems to support kids. Um, sometimes over time, those systems unintentionally or, or intentionally have created barriers. A perfect example of that is in math where uh, it requires maybe a teacher signature to get into pre-AP math, or you have to have a certain grade on a certain assessment, or uh, maybe your parents have to sign the form to say you should get into this math class. Uh, you name it, best intentioned adults, but we became the gatekeepers of kids. You can see the data and you can, it shows that it is our historically underserved populations. It's students that are low income, it's our African-American students, it's our students in special education, and it's our Hispanic students. I have seen students of color not in advanced math courses uh, that should be. I was the only black kid in, in all of my AP classes, and whenever I would like talk to my other friends of color about which classes they were in, they were almost never in AP classes with me. They were in regular or they were in like dual credit. The kids hit these different gatekeeping mechanisms um, that were originally, I believe, built with the best intention to, to help advise kids, uh, but ultimately it deterred them. I was never actually recommended to take the next step in my advanced like, uh, math. And that, that again takes a toll on, on confidence because it's like if my, my teacher doesn't even believe I can do well in this class, then like who am I to believe that I can? It, it's an equity. Um, situation it's not it's not equitable you're blocking children from having opportunities and it's not uh, it's not right we've got to change that access because it's important to kids I would hate to ever be the gatekeeper of a student in their future Our district took a look directly at the fifth and sixth grade level, the transitional time for when students first enter the trajectory for advanced classes. We knew that that was the pivot point and where it all begins. So as a district, we looked for an assessment that would not be as subjective as a, a signature or a call home to a parent, and we landed on our universal screener. We used cut scores from there to take a large chunk of students, more than we ever had, and put them directly into advanced math. It wasn't like, let's start calling these kids and see if they want to. Let's actually put them in. I know in sixth grade math alone, we went from one third of our students in pre-AP to almost two thirds of our students in pre-AP, which had never happened. When we started this, we were really, we were nervous and our teachers were really nervous. Um, they, were, they were worried about failure rates in pre-AP classes being, uh, unusual. They were worried about having to slow down or change the curriculum for their, their advanced classes. They were worried about their tutorials being full with advanced and, and pre p kiddos. But that didn't happen. We didn't have to slow down. We didn't have to change the curriculum. And it just, it felt great and it almost felt like, why did we wait this long? We had students that were uh, scoring high in fifth grade mathematics. Um, but we're not in our 8th grade Algebra 1 advanced math pathway. And so that reflected a challenge um, in our advanced math pathway that we, that we wanted to address. And so uh, we developed a policy manual that provided teachers and campuses with a more consistent and equitable way of admitting kids into advanced mathematics courses. So it wasn't just one score on how you did on one test on one day, but we started taking a more holistic approach to student performance. So we looked at grades, we looked at uh, assessment performance, we looked at teacher recommendations, we looked at parent input, we looked at student input, and we put all that together to say, we think that you are ready for advanced mathematics. The data has shown that our enrollment in advanced mathematics courses has grown, but also our performance has grown, and that when we give these kids the opportunity, they are successful in our advanced mathematics courses. We decided to implement Algebra for All for all of our students. When I first started talking about it, um, everyone thought I had, you know, gone a little cuckoo. I heard a lot of statements like, these kids can't do that. It's not for all children. This is only for this kind of kid. Or, you know, they didn't choose that. They're not motivated. And so really, you know, the first phase of the Algebra for All plan at this school was really breaking down that mindset. Um, who do we believe can succeed. Um, and if we believe that a certain type or a certain student can't succeed, why is that? And so that's digging into those implicit bias um, that we all have. I really believe that all children can do this with the right supports. The results for Algebra for All, I mean, the, the first one is kids believing that they can and they're having fun. 
in math. They're going to the math class. Um, they're enjoying it. I think that's the first part. Uh, the second part about it is teachers changing their mindsets. They can actually see students in the classroom and they're thinking, oh, you know, they actually can do it. And it means the world whenever a student tells their teacher, yeah, I didn't think I could do this, but I can and I actually kind of like math. This is this the stuff that just gets me fired up and I get really excited about it because I'm like, this is exactly what I'm wanting to see. You set those experiences up for students and, and watch them succeed and be successful um, is just a thrill. I always speak to people as if it's their own kids. Everybody wants the best for their own kids. And so here we are in charge of providing opportunities to kids. But it starts with that opportunity um, that all students deserve. If we're here to do what's best for them, then why would we hold back? Why would we hold back opportunities and chances for somebody to excel? Students only get one chance to take sixth grade math. Students only get one chance to take seventh grade math or algebra. And so the time is now to act for the students that are in our building. Uh, the time is now. We can't expect the next generations to do better than the, the ones that are at the top right now if we're not doing what it takes to, to build them up.